Welcome to the channel everyone, my name is Darren Govinda. I work in between the lines of a data scientist and an actuary here in wonderful New York City and this week we're going to learn what it means to be an actuary. So if you're interested, come along for the ride. Okay, so what is it that actuaries really do? I'm gonna give you the one line answer. Actuaries are typically accredited financial professionals that use mathematics, statistics, economics, business finance, and a little bit of accounting knowledge to quantify uncertain future outcomes. We sometimes refer to that as quantifying risk, you might hear, and there are some fairly large companies, typically in financial services, that find this very, very useful. Now, what the hell does all of that mean? Because I said a lot in one sentence and it's not necessarily a very simple sentence. What we'll do in this video is we'll try to unpack all of those dimensions of what it means to be an actuary. If you're not here for the full ride, no problem at all. I'll put timestamps in so you can jump to the part that is of most interest to you. What I will cover in this video is what are the typical traits and characteristics of an actuary? What does an actuary do on the job? So what are the traditional career paths or the traditional roles that we take on? What are some of the newer, more emerging fields that we're taking on? I'll cover all of that. And then I'll share my opinion and my thought on just what a career as an actuary is like and yeah, if I think it's good, if I think it's bad. And then finally, at the end, we'll just summarize. And hopefully by then it uh, was a useful video and you learned what it is that an actuary does. So stick around and enjoy. All right, let's talk about the typical traits of an actuary. So this can be broken down really into two parts. You have the hard skills and you have the soft skills. And I think any career path really, if you want to break down the traits of, the per of a typical person and then you break it down by those two categories. Let's talk about hard skills. Hard skills are easier. <laughs> really? Because they're very well defined. You know, you can go into the casualty actuarial website, you can go to the Society of Actuaries website, you can go to the UK Institute and Faculty of Actuaries, they'll tell you the syllabus, they'll tell you what you need to learn. Those are, are pres prescribed skill sets that, or prescribed knowledge that you would need to learn. You can ingest that knowledge. What I want to focus on is what kind of characteristics or traits help you to ingest that knowledge and then to excel in the career path. So for me, I think an aptitude, a numerical aptitude or an aptitude for mathematics and statistics helps. I think uh, today and in, in the kind of environment we're in, I think an aptitude for coding really helps. Willingness to really learn because the, the world in which we operate as actuaries is always changing. The skill set is always changing. The techniques and methods are always evolving. You know, you have a kind of historical set of techniques that are applied in certain scenarios in the workplace, but really how you apply them can change constantly. And so having a willingness to continuously learn and ability to pick up something new and drive through with it and to push through to understand it is very helpful. So I think the hard skills really come down to these three points. For me, at least, it's your numerical aptitude or your aptitude for mathematics. Then it would be your aptitude for coding. And then finally, your willingness to learn or your curiosity to learn. All right, so let's, let's talk about the soft skills then. Now, actuaries have a notorious reputation for being introverted, awkward and nerdy. I don't, I'm not going to speak to whether that's true or not. It might be true in pockets, but really I think that the most important soft skill for an actuary, whether you're a nerd or not, is the ability to communicate. What I mean by that is 
the ability to communicate complex thoughts and ideas in a simple, easy to understand way. Now, you can throw in anything else you want. For me, I'm gonna leave it at that and say that communication is the most important soft skill. And yeah, those are my views and uh, experiences on the, the typical traits and characteristics of an actuary. All right, so this is really the crux of this whole video and probably why you clicked on it. So I hope I, I can give you an adequate answer in this section, but we're gonna cover the roles that actuaries actually do, what happens day to day um, in, in some of these roles and what they're trying to solve. So I'll break this up into two parts. You have the traditional roles and then you have the emerging or wider field roles. And then maybe I'll, I'll give a, a tip at the end. So if we start with the traditional jobs that an actuary does, it really boils down to this idea of the fundamental equation of insurance. What is the fundamental equation of insurance? Well, it's derived from a typical in equation in any sort of business, right? So price is equal to cost plus profit. The problem in insurance is that you don't know what your true cost is gonna be. And because it is a unique business in which you do not know what your true cost is gonna be and it's highly uncertain and sometimes years out in the future, you need to employ certain statistical methodologies to determine a price. And naturally, we lead to our first job, a pricing actuary. So a pricing actuary looks out into the future to estimate what they think an insurer will incur in cost and then distributes or allocates that cost among policyholders in a fair and equitable way. And that's pricing. So really you're, you're taking that fundamental insurance equation and you're solving for the price. Now on the other side of the house, you have in, in any business, you're trying to, at the end of the year, determine how much money you've made. So you basically want to determine your top line and then ultimately your bottom line, how much profit is left after everything has been paid. But you run into this very same issue because you don't know what your cost is. So you can determine your top line relatively straightforward. It's not necessarily as simple as other businesses, but you can determine how much premium you've, you've earned for a given year. But now you still have to determine how much cost you've incurred. And so in determining how much of the premium you can actually keep for your bottom line, we have a whole nother group of actuaries that we call reserving actuaries. And they go about trying to solve this fundamental insurance equation, but they solve it for profit. So in summary then, the traditional paths for actuaries is to solve the fundamental equation of insurance, either as a pricing actuary to solve for price or as a reserving actuary to solve for profit. Then the second point is the emerging fields. So they're, they're not in the traditional two um, that we just mentioned, but they're somewhat related, or at least the skills of an actuary are useful in these roles. And so in this bucket, a, a couple of things that uh, actuaries might do are data science roles, uh, software engineering roles or software development roles. You also get uh, demography roles, so where you're working with demographics. You also get quant roles. You also get investment banking actuaries, consulting actuaries. Really anywhere in financial services you can find actuaries. And then as you go broader into the tech world, um, into consulting on, on a wide array of things, not necessarily always related to financial services, you can find actuaries. All right, so let's talk about the career benefits, my experience, and just why I think actuarial science is a rewarding career overall. It comes down to two things, in my opinion. I think it comes down to flexibility and your pay per hour. I'll talk about those two things and then I'll also just give you my personal experience as to why I, I think it's a rewarding career path. So let's start with, with the flexibility then. One of the unique things about actuarial science is that it's, for the most part, really well recognized internationally. So wherever you go, you can almost always get something we call mutual recognition. So if you were to get your accreditation in the UK or in South Africa and you travel to the US, there are mutual recognition agreements that allow you to practice as an actuary in those other countries. And so you can really travel to any part of the world and be able to apply your trades. I also think that what's really uh, useful with actuarial science is the, the breadth of the skill set. So not only do you have flexibility within your career, within your career as a traditional actuary, but also wider and beyond that. You can go into other fields and, you know, we touched on wider fields in, a, in, a, in another part of this video, but 
you can really go quite broad and apply your skill sets anywhere you go. There are very few career paths that don't allow you to apply the skills that you learn as an actuary. So you have flexibility in terms of geography, you have flexibility in terms of where you apply your skills, and then you have flexibility to go broader and beyond traditional career paths as an actuary. And I, I really value that, and I think that's one of the things I, I really love about uh, being an actuary. Then there's the second part, which I mentioned, which was pay per hour. So what does this mean? What I actually mean by pay per hour is if you were to take what you earn in a given period, whatever period that is, bi-weekly, monthly or yearly, and you divide it by the corresponding number of hours that you actually put in in that period, the number you get out is your actual pay per hour. And I think in, in actuarial science or in actuarial paths or careers, that ratio is probably better than most other financial professionals. And I think that that's a, a, a particular cool and rewarding trait about being an actuary. You effectively have more balance in your life or uh, you're allowed more balance in your life and you, you get paid relatively well for the, um, for the hours you're, you're putting in. It's not easy and you certainly have to work hard, but I think you, th there's better value in, in this career path, at least at an hourly rate than, than a few others out there. The final part of this section really is just around my experience. I, I feel like the, the career path for me has been very rewarding I feel very blessed to have had the opportunities that I've, I've been given. Um, I think actuarial science, uh, being led into actuarial science has, has had a big part in that. Um, I've been able to travel a lot, I've been able to um, live in different places and now I get to live in, you know, in, in the US here in, in a wonderful city in New York. And solve interesting problems and do interesting work and be able to you know create videos and do all these cool things so for me personally i think the opportunity space has been really broad by by following this path and i, I don't feel boxed in in any way i, I feel quite privileged and quite uh, blessed to have had the opportunities that I've had. So for me, I can certainly tell you that the, the career path has been very rewarding. All right, so we started off by giving an, an introduction or a one-liner as to what an actuary is and what an actuary does. That was a very complex line and so we broke it up into the accreditation process that one has to follow to become an actuary. We touched on the characteristics and traits of an actuary and we went into some detail as to what an actuary actually does. And then finally we ended off with the benefits of uh, the career path and why I think it's a pretty rewarding uh, career to follow. So. I hope you found that useful. I hope it was interesting. And I hope at least at a high level, you understand what an actuary does. If you found this interesting, please do subscribe. Uh, there'll be more coming in the space. I'll talk about my experiences in actuarial and data science. I'll touch on finance. And I'll also talk about just general productivity as a professional. So if you enjoy it, please do come along for the journey. But until next time, thank you for watching this and see you in the next one. Cheers. Okay, so what it is, well, I'll put timestamps in so you can jump to the past, to the part. If you're, if you're not here with the So, yeah, um, all right, let's talk about the typical. All right, so the other, di so the other dimension of uh, pay, uh, and if you enjoyed it, I will, um, and just talk about general productivity as a professional with sirens. Welcome to New York City. All right, we'll wait for that. And now we have a helicopter. Wonderful. All right, I hope there's no more sirens. All right, that's it. Until next time, peace out.